Um, if you do have a Nextel phone with a Direct Connect, you can even use the radio thing here and put in put this in. And then when I sync this to my phone, it's actually going to have my Direct Connect number already in there for me too. So I've got all my uh, information in here. Um, so now what I do is I have this show up as a business card. So in your contact, click on business card. And this opens the business card designer. Um, the reason I had everything filled in before is because the business card is going to show all your fields. And the order I put these fields in is how it shows up in my card. It's just that simple. Uh, you can click add and add any kind of field that you want. Uh, just you don't have to stick with simply the fields that are open in the front of Outlook. Um, I got my picture in there uh, just by simply putting my picture in my contact. So again, that wasn't anything fancy. Just come up here, click picture, change picture, and, and upload it from a digital camera. Um, if you've got a Windows Mobile smartphone, you can actually take a picture of someone. Um, it'll actually ask you if you want to associate that with a contact. If you say yes, it's done. And your Windows Mobile phone will actually sync it back to your Outlook. So that's actually how I got pictures of all of our staff. I walk around and everybody, you know, obviously gave me a lot of dirty looks because I'm just walking up with my, my, my camera pointed at them. I took all these pictures and, you know, it came right to my Outlook. Okay, so before we wrap up, um, I did quickly want to uh, point out a couple things about uh, public folders. Again, since I'm looking at my folder list, that's how I can see them. You can see we make very, very heavy use of public folders. Uh, we've had public folders for a long, long time. Um, also, for a long, long time, we've made the transition to, um, uh, to SharePoint. So a lot of these things here are just for, uh, just for old history. But say there's a public folder I'm really interested in. You see you've got this favorites thing up here. Uh, what I will do um, is move a couple of the public folders that I want to look at on a regular basis to here. Um, notice since I'm connected um, to our Exchange server, this thing went from normal to bold. And what that means is that's syncing up this folder um, so I can actually look at what's in this public folder later too. That works in that cache mode. That's why, uh, that's why I, uh, another one of the reasons I use cache mode. So to put a public folder in any one of your favorites, you right click on it, add to favorites and add it, and it goes down here. Now I'm going to quickly switch back to that first uh, mail view we were looking at that showed the favorite folders up here. And people say, well, why didn't my public folder thing show up there? Because these are mail favorites. Those aren't public folder favorites. But then what you can do from here is if you go from your Outlook, your public folder favorites, you say add to favorites. And I click the mail view. Now I've got it in my mail favorites. So um, most people don't know that you can actually have public folder stuff in your mail favorites. Rules and alerts, uh, those have always been here, um, but what this is for is ha for having an e email automatically go somewhere based on different criteria. Um, that's one of the reasons why I've got a lot of folders. Um, any uh, customer related information actually I don't keep in here. I actually put an activity in our system, uh, which we recommend agencies do of course too. Um, we've actually got an activity capture, which will uh, send our items right to our systems as activities, uh, pretty similar to what agencies have with their management systems. So I don't keep emails here that uh, belong in our system. Don't think anybody should. Uh, that's why we've got the activity capture. But a lot of things are like newsletters and notifications and things like that. I don't want them jumbling up my mailbox. One of the examples is uh, our system sends us notes when we need to firm up an appointment. We've got it coming up, things like that. And I don't want all these things coming in my inbox. So what I would do then is under rules and alerts, Um, I can set up a rule for any number of things. Uh, move a message uh, from someone to a certain folder with specific words. Um, you see almost limitless uh, possibilities with what you can do here. You can choose all the stuff up here or you can simply step through it um, with these items down here. Um, I'll choose my items, hit next. You can choose more of these items, hit next. Um, like I said, lots and lots of possibilities. The most simple thing to do is just move a message from someone to a folder. Um, you can also do that right from a message itself. Uh, right from this message, I can say create rule. And it's going to automatically pick the sender for me. Um, so I'll say subject contains such and such. And we'll move it to, and I'll say this. So that's it. That's all it takes to, to create a rule. Um, you've actually got the option, too, to run this rule now. Um, so history will go into that folder.
And two, uh, right before we wrap up, just to show uh, what some of the options are in Outlook, um, I've got my things set uh, the way I like them. Um, a lot of the things that you saw come from defaults. Um, the email default reminder for uh, items every 15 minutes. You can change it to every hour, so every time you do something with your calendar and task, it's going to default to an hour. Um, you can set your reminder times for your tasks at a certain day. In your calendar, you can set your work week. If you work on Sundays, then um, that show work week versus full week isn't really going to make a difference. But if you're only working five days a week, uh, you'll gain two extra days so your calendar won't be quite as, uh, as squished. Um, you can do things like add holidays to your calendar, which I've done. You can set your time zones in here. Uh, your email options. Um, this is where you do things like um, if you're going to reply to a message, you want your old one to close. You know, that's what I do. You can do the same thing for forward, and this is where you set it. Um, you can you know, mark things with, uh, you know, if you're typing in an email, um, a common thing to do is if somebody sends you a list of questions, you say, please look below and see where my comments are. So if you have that on, it easily shows where you were typing. You know, lots of options in there uh, under advanced email options. Um, a couple to note. Um, auto save uh, items every so many minutes. Kind of like the auto save in Word. You know, if you're composing a long email, you're going to want your auto save turned on. You know, this is where you uh, tell it if you want the, you know, little pop-up icons or your envelope notification. Uh, this is where you'll find these. So quickly moving on under mail setup, um, this is uh, a lot of information. You're really not going to change much. Uh, this is just where things are set up. Under message format, this is where you can change things from plain old text to rich text to HTML, uh, just to provide for richer um, emails and calendar items and so forth. Uh, you can set stationaries, you know, if you want things like backgrounds. Signature. Now, I made my business card, but my, that doesn't mean it's my signature. So what I had to do is, you know, make a new signature. And I'll call this signature test. So with signature test, then I clicked on business card and picked mine. That's how I got my business card as my signature. I'll cancel this since I've already got it there. Spell checkers. Well, our, our tech guys love spell checkers. Um, other options. Uh, this is where you would set uh, like Outlook to auto delete your deleted items upon exiting. Um, if you have that and you have stuff in your deleted items, it'll ask you. Auto archive. This is where you configure archiving. Um, We'll actually talk about our archive in our webinar on archiving. Um, this, uh, this is not the best way just to get your Outlook clean because then you've got to worry about where these things are being backed up. Delegates. Delegates is where you would give people permission to look at your stuff. If I click Add here and I'm going to add Bill as a delegate, show you what kind of options I have. Um, I can let Bill uh, be an editor of my calendar, so that means he can edit um, he can read, uh, he can create, and he can modify items. Um, he can also do my task. Well, if I don't want him to look at my task, I won't. If I, don't, if I want him to just be able to look at my contacts but not do anything with them, I'll make him a reviewer of these. So you can see all the different options you have for each one of these. Common courtesy thing is if you're going to give somebody um, a delegate access, automatically send a message to summarize what permissions you're giving them and then whether or not you want delegates to see your private items. Remember when you're in that appointment or task you can hit the private button so they couldn't see it unless they have this. So that's how you can uh, uh, get mailbox access. So I think that's uh, coming to the end of our uh, webinar on how to get the most out of Outlook 2007. I hope everybody was able to pull even at least one little tip or trick out of there that's going to make you more efficient and help you stay better organized. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can view this webinar and uh, past webinars on our YouTube website where we have all of our videos. Content about future webinars will be coming out in our newsletter, so if you wish to subscribe to that, you can let me know at this email address here. And if you have any further questions, uh, we'll get those answered as soon as we can for you. So again, thank you, and have a great afternoon.